Hey everybody, Mark and Zane from Hit Chef Academy. We hope you are well. Um, today I am in the kitchen with the head chef. This is my able son. And able sous chef. Able sous chef. So this is Zane and I'm Mark and again from Hit Chef Academy. Today we are going to be doing, and when the title, you hear the title, you're just going to want to eat this. Okay, so we're going to be doing double chocolate shortbreads. Incredibly simple recipe. I see a lot of recipes online for cookies and you're up to like 12, 14 ingredients. That's not how we work in this house. Bye today. All right, nice and simple. So we've got 175 grams of softened butter. We've got 85 grams of caster sugar, 200 grams of plain flour, uh, two tablespoons of cocoa powder, and 100 grams of chocolate chips. Now you can mix it up. You can do milk, you can do dark, you can do white, a mixture of all three. As long as it comes up to 100 grams, you're a winner. And even if you have to stretch it out by chucking a few rogue M&Ms or Maltesers in, yeah. I'm sure no one's going to care. All right, double chocolate. That's all I've got to say. Double chocolate. All right, well, well, easy. It's a school holiday. It's a biscuit barrel is getting raided daily. Um, and this is a really lovely, simple recipe. The you can keep it. The truth is out. You can keep it in the fridge, rolled, cut them, bake them, keep them in the freezer, pull them out when you need to, okay? If, like Zane, turns up with a travelling troop of his friends, it's a nice little thing just to pull out the fridge as a quick snack. All right, so Zane's going to get onto this straight away. It's very simple. So the butter's been softened to room temperature, and Zane's just going to mix the butter and the sugar together. Now, can you remember what that's called, Zane? No. Not cri cri cri. Yeah, no. Caster sugar? Creamy. Oh, creamy. <laughs> I do try to teach my son some things. Um, I'd like to blame Fortnite, and if you make us a Fortnite, I'll watch you. No. I'll find you. That's it. So Zane's going to cream all that together. That'll take a couple of minutes. So the butter and the sugar have all come together. Zane's knackered. His shoulder's raging. But he's now got to go to the next bit. So um, he's not going to come on a dog walk or exercise him in other ways. So we're going to go in next with the flour and the cocoa powder. Just dump them in. Get them in there. Okay. And then we're going to mix again. There you go. I'll take that for you, mate. Well done. Take it away, then. And that's it. So at this stage, it's good just to kind of cut the butter and it'll start to attract itself to the dry matter and it will just bring itself together into a dough. Are you tired? Are you tired? Oh dear. <laughs> just showing yourself up on the live internet telly. There you go. If your butter gets stuck to your spoon, just using a clean washed finger, I hasten to add, and we're together. So that cutting motion, just saw through the fat, saw through the butter, and you can combine everything together. Give it a couple of minutes, a little bit of patience. At this stage now, I'm going to add the chocolate chips. Now using the back of my spoon, I'm just pushing it down against the bowl. That way I can break up any of those last few final lumps of butter that are just resisting the flour and the cocoa powder. And we're just going to bring that all together. And now I can see it's slowly getting darker. I'm still finding those tiny little pockets of butter, but by just mushing it down, there we go. Beautiful. Thank you, Chef. Right. So now, again, with a clean hand, I'm just going to bring this dough together. Don't handle it too, too much, otherwise you're going to have something really, really sloppy. Our hands are obviously warm. And we've got the butter within here as well. There we go. Easy as that. You happy, Chef? Acceptable chef? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Can you just show that to the camera? Excuse me, please. You could have done better. Yeah, but apparently you don't have any shoulder muscles. No. <laughs> so that is, there it is. Really pliable. Really lovely sticky gooey dough. That's what we want, okay. Uh, what you've got to do now is you've got to chill this. The purpose of chilling will become self-explanatory in a little minute, all right? So we're going to chill this. So let me get rid of the bowl, dude. Got a couple of sheets of cling film, yeah. and we're just going to use half the dough for this, and I'll reserve the other half. And again, 
This is so freezer stable, it's absolutely fantastic. So Zeng's gonna roll it into a bit of a sausagey log, aren't you? So you're gonna roll it up in your cling film, twist it all the way around, that's it. And for anybody who saw our other video where we made 15s, we had to do that as well. So if you, if you wanna learn how to tornado, as we call it, we use it predominantly as well for meat and butchery where you want to get a nice uniform shape. It's exactly the same process here. So we want to get this into a skinny-ish log. That's a really good job, mate, well done. Well done. So do you want to roll that? Hold it up to the camera so they can see the size, please, Chef, if you don't mind. Thank you. All right, lovely. So there you go. So it's about, get that bit of cling film out of the way. It's about yay round. Yeah. Okay, you want it about that big? Cookie size, simple as that. So pop that in the fridge for about an hour. This does firm up really quickly as well. And like I say, you can pop it in the freezer. If you take it out for about 20 minutes from the freezer, it's ready to slice and ready to go. One hour has surpassed. It's not, we did a blue Peter thing and we had some made already, but don't tell anyone, right? And there you go, it's come out, it's firmed up, it's wonderful. All right, so Zane's just gonna unwrap it from its cling film, cling film jacket. As you can see, Christmas Day in our house goes on till about the 28th of December when Zane's unwrapping things. There we go, wonderful. There you, go. you unroll it, mate, and I'll take the cling film off of you. Mercy, mercy. So, so you want to cut these, and you want to cut them about that thick. Now, when you're cutting these, because they have whole chop chips in them, you might hit a chop chip and your knife decides to go, see ya, all right? So we're using a serrated knife. Zane's going to use a sawing action, so hopefully we can minimise the risk of that happening. If it happens, don't worry. Just cut it. If some falls off, carry on cutting and stick it together. In the oven, it won't care. It will just come straight back together. We really don't care, do we, Zane? No. That's it. So Zane's got the end off. And you want to cut about... About thick. Yeah, about that thick, mate. That's it. Well done. There you go. Good job. So out of this recipe, you're going to get about 16 cookies. Well, Zane's going for 17. There we go. So we've got a mushy Yay! one. There we go. Just as I wanted. So chuck them onto a baking tray. Zane, do you want to put them onto a baking tray? Just space them out. Remember to space them out, otherwise they're all going to stick together. One giant cookie, I can't see a downside to, quite frankly. But um, yeah, we're going to try if you need individuals, that. you're going to have hordes of children screaming at you while you're trying to divide it. So make your life easier. There we go, perfect. So we've got two little road bits left. Can we mush that into a cookie, Chef? Of course we can. We don't like food waste in this house, do we? Especially when it comes to a chocolate cookie. There we go. So they go into the oven, 160 degrees if it's a fan oven, 180 degrees or gas mark four, for about 10 minutes. Now when you take them out and they cook, they are gonna be really soft. Just allow them to harden and they'll be absolutely fantastic and they'll still be lovely and warm, all right? So we're gonna pop these in the oven and we'll see you back in 10 minutes. So we're happy. So I'm gonna take those cookies out now. They've had 10 minutes. I think it's one of the best indicators with food. You start to smell it, not burning. That's, that's also an indicator that you probably cook something a little too long. But I can smell it. it. smells like cookies. Everybody smells happy. So we're gonna get them out of the oven. And there you go. So they've come out of the oven. You see there, they've held their shape really well, you know, considering what's in them. Um, they hold the uniformity. They look rough, they look rustic, but I like that. That means it's homemade, it's been made with love, it's not been processed, it's not been mass produced in the factory. It's been made by an 11 year old ultimately, but you know, his old man had to stir because his shoulders weren't quite up to it, but we, we'll, we'll forgive him for that. Now when they come out, they're gonna be incredibly hot, obviously, they're gonna be incredibly soft too. So what you wanna do, I don't know it's gonna be hard, Resist for about 10 minutes and then you'll be able to lift them out and they'll be able to eat in. But let them let them cool down and obviously be careful if you're feeding children, you've got those hot chocolate chips within. So you want to make sure that they're cooled down to a temperature that they can tolerate. And what you'll end up with is a beautiful, firmed up, delicious looking cookie. And um, well, head chef first, I suppose. So. And are they okay, Chef? Oh. Yeah.
beautiful. Uh, part of that did hit my trainer, by the way. Um, but we have a Staffordshire Bull Terrier and she'll eat it. She'll be very happy. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for watching our little video with sous chef Mark, head chef Zane, who currently has a mouthful of wonderful, delicious cookie. Um, we hope you enjoy the recipe. Um, hope you try it at home. And again, if there's any recipes you'd like to see, drop them in the comments box and we'll do our best to try. So Zane, did that, did that taste good? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. You finished that off and I'll end the video. Goodbye everybody. Take care from all at HIT training.